Thank you very much, Mr. Nuruddin Kaparov. Hadarin, I Professor K. Pashutam Reddy Sahab, who is a member of the Mahaliyat, and who is a member of the Talim. I will tell you that you will have a lecture and you will have a topic Education for Sustainable Development. The topic uh, which I have chosen and uh, given to me is Education for Sustainable Development. This topic itself is so fascinating that uh, I just because today it's not the time for lengthy speeches. However, with due respects to the distinguished speakers who are going to speak after me, I would confine only to 10 or 12 minutes. Friends, today's world, as all of you are aware, is engulfed with a large number of uh, environmental issues. To begin with, we have the depletion of the ozone layer, global warming, loss of biodiversity, spreading desertization, and the danger from nuclear reactors and nuclear bombs. But in addition to these five major, we have problems of governance. How should the nations of the world be addressing these issues? Problems of governance, there we The most important block is, how should the governments assess the rising expectations or the rising aspirations of the teeming millions of the world? It is true that everybody has expectation from the government. But then what is the mechanism that the government has to understand the real aspirations? That is one, one difficulty, but the gov gov governments in the world, they are trying to overcome it. Then when it comes to performance, after assessing the aspirations of the people, the governments of the world should come up with policies which are appropriate and which are focused they should aim at fulfilling the essential needs of the poorest of the poor. So this being in, in this scenario, then how do we equip the, the people of the world in every given country, friends? If we, near, if we have to do something, then the only means is through education. Everybody knows that, for example, take the case of India. Every day we have uh, power shortages. Right now, you know, yesterday the whole of North India was in darkness and there was a power failure. And that is basically because there is no adequate power and there is so much of pressure on it. Now, we definitely need to talk to the people of this country in a very, very frank manner. Governments cannot be fooling the people. They should talk and they should explain every, every small, just as a father, you know, in a family, just as the father talks to his children, his wife and sisters and brothers. Similarly, governments also should frankly discuss with the people and then through education. Now here, I just one example I want to give you, sir, uh, with, uh, because Manu is one of the leading universities here located in Hyderabad. And right now, the, the focus of the government of India is on skill development. I was there in two committees uh, there and uh, this particular focus is there because we need to focus on the, those children, those students who fail to pass 10th class or 12th class, or sometimes they, they may not, a few of them may not even make graduation. But such students can be given about four months, five months training program, and they can be connected to topics like solar energy. Solar energy, friends, it is going to be the technology in the days to come, which will, which will provide employment to millions and millions of people. It is waiting to happen. So a university, a budding university like, you know, a, a very relevant university like uh, Manu, if it takes the initiative, definitely you can connect to uh, the poor because ultimately what is the purpose of a university? Our job is to educate, sensitize, motivate and connect them to livelihoods. That we need to do. In addition to this, when we are talking about education for sustainable development, we are talking about those technologies which will ultimately clean up the planet Earth, the, the ever-increasing levels of air and water pollution. That's a big challenge today. We need to find solutions. And there are solutions already available, but these solutions need to be transferred, transferred to the youngsters of this country. India has the largest young population in the world. We have to educate them, give them the right kind of technologies, and then 
our youngsters will conquer the world. Friends, there are the, the right to education, of course, uh, sir will be speaking, uh, but then we need to go beyond. I'll tell you one more example. Uh, sir, this year the monsoon failed. Uh, there is a 30% deficiency. Let us hope uh, God will once again give us the, the rains we need. But then, what happens? Sometimes we may miss the rain. Should the government uh, keep quiet? Such a powerful government, supposed to be a major developing country, with so many universities and IITs and such a big scientific pool, what exactly are we doing? We should go to the people. We, if, it, if the clouds come and if they don't precipitate, the government should ensure that the clouds are seeded and we get the rainfall. It is not fiction, it is real. Today, technology facilitates the seeding of the clouds. China, you know, one country which is now number one in the world when it comes to cloud seeding. 45,000 people are involved. They have an army for that purpose. And they have 550 planes which take off. Whenever they see a cloud and if it is not raining, I mean raining, if it is not precipitating, these planes go there and they, depending upon the height of the cloud, if it is a warm cloud, they will be firing sodium chloride, ordinary tables, table salt. And if it is at a higher level, if it is a cold cloud, ordinary silver iodide. And we get the rain. There they are doing it. Throughout the world, many countries are seeding the clouds. But our government, you know, which is indifferent to the real issues of the people, if there is no water, there is no agriculture, there is no food. And you know, the entire industrial economic activity is dependent on this. So go in for the right kind of education. In what is happening, I come from Osman University, and I was there for nearly 35 years. I was, a, I was twice president of the university. Believe me, friends, we are not striking the right chord. What the, what the people and the students need, the universities are not delivering. There is a big gap. The aspirations of the, you know, everybody wants a job, a wonderful, you know, source of livelihood with dignity and honor. Those technologies are not being transferred. Take, for example, civil engineering. You know, today it is possible to build wonderful houses with energy efficiency. And they are known as the green building technologies. We have to build that kind of houses. Friends, since today is not the day for very lengthy speeches, I am extremely grateful to uh, Manu, which has given me this wonderful opportunity for a very long time. I personally wanted to call on our distinguished vice chancellor because I knew him through Professor Malaredi. And uh, he was always speaking very high of him. And Professor Hashmi, who is here, we, we were always, uh, I wanted to meet him, but I could not. Today, God has given me an opportunity. And uh, uh, I'm connected to India Log. Just the Turkish government had invited me about 15 years ago to Turkey and I was their state guest. They invited me because I was known <coughs> by the grace of God for my work on the subject on sustainable development and they invited me to view the kind of development they had launched in the southeastern part of Turkey where they have built four major dams and the whole project was known as GAP. GAP. Believe me, friends, that is one of the best examples in sustainable development. They have built dams, no doubt, but they have not driven away the people uh, uh, in the likely to be submerged areas. Their development is with a smile, with a human face. People have been taken into confidence. And you know, I was there on the day when one of the dams was being filled and uh, a village was being you know, uh, emptied. Uh, the people were migrating and it was a festival atmosphere. They were going for the good into wonderfully newly built colonies with schools and, and you know, every family who would lose their house in the village, which, which is to be submerged, they were provided land under the dam, which is they were provided with livelihood. 
So naturally that was a big promotion, wonderful house, school, college, medical facilities, and also a, a reasonable piece of land which will ensure their livelihood. Why can't we do this in our country? Not only that, friends, Turkey is the leader when it comes to agricultural technologies. They are world number one in pista, in badam, in olive oil. And uh, building that entire gap project, sir, it is not just irrigation. In our country, we build a dam and we give the water. It, it is known as flow irrigation. But then, the, uh, there, it is, a, it is a comprehensive project where land leveling, then they choose, it is connected to agriculture universities, connected to all the departments, and the development there is perfect. It is sustainable. Some other day, friends, God willing, I'll definitely come. Thank you very much.